What's up guys, Zach Sauce, AKA Confusion Surgeon here and welcome back to another episode of Hardware Help. On today's episode we have viewer requested content. Viewer Hari Prasad asked, uh, what is bottlenecking and how does each part affect it? So on today's video, I'm gonna go over bottlenecking in general. What is it and when do you see it occur usually? And what, which parts affect it the most, which parts affect it the least, which parts might not affect it at all. So when we talk about bottlenecking, we're really talking about one or more parts causing a system to slow down and them being the reason for the slowdown. So your system, your gaming system, is capable of processing a certain amount of data. So uh, let's call that its, its maximum processing ability or MPA. I just made that acronym up. So if you have an MPA, say, of 10 terabytes a minute, which is a ridiculously large amount, but for the sake of argument, let's, let's, let's say 10 terabytes a minute. If any one of your parts is incapable of reaching that uh, maximum, then they're gonna bring the total down. So you have several different options for bottlenecking here. Now, some of these will be more important than others. When, when you are deciding the parts you want to use when you're building a new PC, uh, where are the areas you wanna focus on in order to minimize bottlenecking? And, and if, if you don't know, if, if maybe English is not your first language and you haven't heard this term before, uh, bottlenecking is, is when you take a, a, like a general bottle of Coke or beer, there is a, a large area on the bottom and then it tapers to a neck at the top. That is the bottle neck. Now, if you try to pour water into the bottle, there's a maximum amount that the bottle will accept before it'll start spraying all over the place because the neck is restricting the flow into the larger bottle. It's the same idea with computers. So if you have a uh, top of the line 20 core Intel Xeon processor that's capable of, you know, it's got 20 cores running at like three gigahertz turbo boost, let's say, or 3.5 gigahertz. It's ridiculously, it's fast and it has plenty of multi-threaded capability, but you're playing a game on a, uh, a 750 Ti. The bottleneck there is the video card. The, the processor is capable of providing all the data the video card needs, and it is actually waiting on the video card to do any further processing. It has to send data to the video card, wait on it. So the processor is now not doing anything. It's waiting until the video card can process the data completely and then send back the, uh, the confirmation that it's done and needs the next part. On the other hand, if you have, say, a Intel Atom, uh, you know, dual core or even one of the original Atom single core in order execution processors and you pair it with a 1080 Ti, uh, your bottleneck there is the processor because the, the 1080 Ti is going to take what little data the Atom can send to it, it's going to process it in an instant. It's not even going to fill up its entire buffer. The data the Atom can send to it is, is such a limited amount that the 1080 Ti is done with it almost instantly and can't even process at its full potential. So you might you might see GPU usage in the, the 40 to 50% range uh, and you'll see lower frame rates because the Atom is holding the 1080 Ti back. So what you wanna do is you wanna have a balanced approach. Uh, in general, the, uh, the GPU will be your bottleneck 99.99% .99 of the time. So if, as long as you buy a decent processor, your GPU is gonna be your bottleneck. And if we're talking about budget builds, so uh, if you don't have any budget, then you can buy whatever you want. You're not gonna have any bottlenecks. Hardware wise, what are the parts that can cause bottlenecks? Well, your two main culprits as we went over before are GPUs and processors. Then we have questions like RAM and how does it fi figure into bottlenecking and hard drives and how do they figure into bottlenecking? So hard drives are not gonna bottleneck the actual gameplay at all. Uh, the only thing you're gonna see on hard drives when you're talking about SSDs versus mechanical drives is game load times, OS boot times, and program uh, boot times. And by the way, if you don't have an SSD, uh, an SSD is the single fastest way to speed up the, the feel of your system. So, so OS boot times and opening up random programs. So like you, you, you launch a web browser, open up Word, etc. Those, the differences between an SSD and a mechanical drive in random access are, are mind boggling and you will never want to go up, go back. So if you're using a mechanical drive only right now, I highly recommend you upgrade to an SSD, at least a small one to run your boot drive and a few important programs off of. However, for the purposes of gaming, which is what we're talking about here, you're not going to see any differences between those two except in game load times. So the game may take a while to load fully, 
But once it does, the hard drive's not slowing you down at all. You're, you're then reliant on other hardware in the system. RAM, generally not a bottleneck. Uh, it, can, it can stop you from running some programs. If, if you've only got, say, four gigs of RAM, this is a four gigabyte DDR3. This is actually registered RAM, so this is a server stick. If all you've got is one four gigabyte stick, you may be limited in some of the games you can play. But once you're in a game and it's working, then you're not bottlenecked by the amount of RAM you have. And RAM speed, while somewhat important on the top end, uh, you're not gonna see much difference in performance uh, on the low end of things. So if you're, if you're making a budget build, your RAM speed's not gonna be that big a deal. One of the other parts, such as your processor or your GPU, are gonna be the bottleneck long before RAM's gonna be your bottleneck. So four gigs of RAM is about your minimum these days. Eight gigs is highly recommended. Uh, if you're building a new PC, eight gigabytes is where you wanna be. Dual channel, if you can get it. So these are two matching four gigabyte sticks. What this allows the processor to do is to send data through in two streams at the same time. So just like this, that's dual channel. So think this is the data and it can go through both channels at the same time. If you have only one stick, then you essentially cut the amount of data that can go through the RAM in half. So if you can get it, get two four gig sticks. If not, one eight gigabyte stick is still gonna be fine. Uh, you're not really gonna see any bottlenecks from that especially in a budget build. Processor, this is one that can bottleneck you in games. First of all, AMD's Ryzen CPUs are actually uh, still not quite optimized for most games because uh, most game companies have been developing for Intel for the past 10-ish years. Since AMD has not been a real competitor to Intel, there hasn't really been a reason to develop and specialize the games for anything but Intel. So Intel CPUs in general are going to automatically net you another five or 10 FPS in most games, just because the games have been optimized for Intel CPUs. That is starting to change because Ryzen has enough of the market now that game companies realize they have to develop for Ryzen as well. So uh, you are gonna see that change a little bit. So in general, on a budget build, you're gonna wanna do a nice CPU. You know, don't get, don't get the lowest CPU possible, but also don't buy the, the most expensive CPU possible. Just find somewhere, somewhere in the middle, towards the low end, that will suffice for the tasks you want it to do. If all you're doing is gaming, then a Core i3 or a Ryzen 3 are gonna be perfect. You don't need anything better. Those four cores are gonna be all you need. Most games aren't even multi-threaded still, even today. And even the ones that are multi-threaded are not gonna generally take advantage of more than four cores. There are few and far between is the game that takes advantage of more than four cores. So, so with those quad core chips, you're gonna be perfectly fine. Eighth gen i3, uh, you know, Ryzen 3, even if you had to go back down to the older generation i3s that are dual cores with hyper-threading, you're still gonna be fine. Your bottleneck is gonna be over here on my left, your right, which is the video card. Now this is a GTX 950. This is a perfectly fine video card on a budget build. This is a GTX Titan. This Titan will wipe the floor with the 950. However, the Titan can be bottlenecked by the processor. The 950, it's gonna, you're gonna need to be basically running like an Atom to bottleneck a 950. So if all you can afford is uh, you know, a first or second gen i3, then you probably don't wanna get something like a Titan because it's gonna be wasted unless you're planning on upgrading that processor later. And if you bought a second gen i3, it also means you need a second gen motherboard to go with it and then you're stuck in that generation. So the, the whole upgrade the processor later thing doesn't really work unless you're buying uh, modern hardware. So if you buy, say, uh, an AM4 motherboard and you got one of the cheaper non-Ryzen AM4 CPUs, you could then later upgrade that to a Ryzen CPU and get a little extra performance and then get a nicer GPU as well. Or if you bought a Ryzen 3, you could upgrade that to a Ryzen 7 later. Same thing goes with the Core i3 8th gen. If you bought that and an 8th gen motherboard, you could later upgrade it to an i5 or an i7 and, uh, and give you some extra breathing room for a nicer video card. Like I said, you wanna be balanced here. You don't wanna have, uh, you don't wanna have the lowest end video card possible and you don't want the most expensive video card possible either. You want the one that will work with your system. Now, you do, however, want to spend the, a large percentage of your budget on the GPU. The GPU is the most important part of your build for gaming. So you wanna, you wanna basically pick out these parts first, make sure you can get uh, the best deals, the best prices, and that everything is gonna work together, and then every bit of money you have left, spend it on the GPU. 
because even if even if the GPU is bottlenecked by one of the other parts, later on down the road, you could upgrade and still keep the GPU. This thing is gonna be with you for a while, especially on budget builds. So like I said, make sure to spend the most on the GPU and then kind of in order this way. So actually, I, I didn't intentionally put them in this order, but this is actually the perfect order. So GPU, uh, starting from my left, your right, spend the most on the GPU, then processor, then RAM, then storage. Uh, and then obviously extra stuff, power supply, you want a, you want a, a, a reputable company, um, something that's not gonna burst into flames. I've had that happen before. I've actually had a server power supply burst into flames and those have fans on them that ramp up to eight or 9,000 RPM. So they're pushing air out the back at dozens of miles per hour and uh, it caught on fire. And so it was like a, a jet engine shooting, shooting flames out the back of the server. So I quickly had to yank the power cord uh, before it set the data center on fire. That was fun. Um, so that can happen. Make sure you get reputable brands when you buy a power supply and uh, buy something that's you know maybe 10 or 15% more powerful than you need that we have a little room for growth in the future. And then cases, whatever, doesn't really matter. You can buy the cheapest case you want. Um, the, only, the only difference in a cheap case and a, a nice case is the build quality, uh, the ease of building in it, basically. Um, so how much do you wanna get cut, essentially? If you don't mind a few scrapes and bruises, if you've ever tried to give a cat a bath, uh, I've tried to give a cat a bath before. Uh, that was a bad idea. I still have scars on my arms from trying to do that. So I'm a dog guy, who knows? I thought I could give the cat a bath. It didn't work out. They're very small, uh, but they're very, they're very good fighters. And they're also very sharp on several sections of their body. There's many sharp objects, so I wouldn't recommend that. But basically, a very cheap, like 10 or $20 case is essentially, building inside it is like trying to give a cat a bath. You're gonna come out of it with cuts and scrapes, and you may or may not have even accomplished what you went in there to do in the first place. Um, but it's not gonna bottleneck you. And uh, you know, your other parts, your peripherals, it's kind of whatever. Um, you can play uh, you can play PUBG just fine with a Dell mouse and keyboard that comes with a, a Dell PC, uh, just like you can, uh, uh, you know, a hundred and ten dollar Razer Naga or whatever. So it's not a real big difference there. Monitor does make a big difference, but um, that's only in quality of life and how you feel, uh, how you look, and how the system looks and feels to you. It's not going to really make a difference in performance, other than the resolution of the monitor is going to determine if your video card can push it to the fullest or not. So if you buy a 1080p screen, you're going to be able to run everything at 1080p high much easier than if you bought a uh, 3440 by 1440 screen uh, and, and you're talking about three times as many pixels. You're gonna have to have a much more powerful video card to run it at its native, native resolution and, and maintain that 60 plus FPS. So that's it for the benchmarking uh, explanation video. I just wanted to make a short video explaining what it was and how it affects you and how which parts affect it the most. I am gonna do a video uh, on actually testing various parts and where you start to see benchmarking occur. I have a lot of video cards and a lot of processors so I can kind of uh, go back and forth and test both of those, but that's gonna require uh, a little more work on the back end to get the actual benchmarks done and uh, and get a spreadsheet done so I can give you the most accurate results. That's it for today. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, if you've made it this far, I am also, as per the last hardware help video, there is gonna be a $5 Steam giveaway as part of this video. So uh, just drop a comment down below and say, uh, say you wanna be entered in the $5 giveaway. And um, thanks for watching this far. And thanks for watching it all. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Also, I'm doing Twitter now, so hit me up on Twitter, uh, at Zaxby Tweet. Z-A-X-B-Y, Tweet. Uh, at Zaxby Tweet, that's me. I'm gonna be doing the Twitter thing, so follow me over there, and you'll get updates, behind the scenes stuff. Uh, we can talk back and forth, we can tweet back and forth at each other, you know, 140 or, I think they extended the amount of characters recently. I, I haven't been on Twitter since 2012, but um, I'll, I'm back on there now, so you'll see me on there at Zaxby Tweet, follow me on there, like, comment, subscribe, and share. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.